So Google's Cloud Next event just wrapped up and well, in typical Google fashion, it was a bit of a shotgun approach when it comes to announcements. They highlighted a new TPU, uh, Gemini 2.5 is going wide, and we also had some stuff on AI agents, although I am mostly gonna be honing in on the creative AI side of things. Obviously the latest on VO2, Imagen 3 or Imagine 3 as it was called on stage and a new music generator. So did Google cook? They did. Can you get a plate? Well, maybe. You just have to go through the drive-through, although you might get a free hamburger. So in general, Google's event, as to be expected, was definitely more focused on the enterprise side of things. A lot of it was focused on the Vertex platform, which is leveraged to utilize Google's APIs for you know, business platforms. That said, there were some very interesting video, image, and audio announcements made. And yes, to note, you can access Vertex as well. There really is nothing stopping you. And interestingly, you can generate there for free, kinda. I'm gonna put an asterisk on that. We'll talk about that in just a minute. First off, they did have a small segment on a very cool announcement that they made you know, the night before the event, which detailed how Google is part of the team that is bringing the 1939 classic, The Wizard of Oz, to the sphere. I did some reading about it this morning. The project is super fascinating, including, you know, upscaling the original film to 16K, utilizing a new VO2 feature in outpainting in order to create, you know, more of that immersive experience that the sphere is known for. And additionally, using VO2 to create performances of characters that might have been out of frame in the original film. Now, I do want to note that Google wasn't the only tool utilized, uh, you know, to bring this to the sphere. Uh, other companies included Topaz, Adobe's After Effects, uh, Nuke was also used, Maya was used, all of which resulting in a project that apparently weighs in at 1.2 petabytes of data. And just to give you an idea of how much data that is, a typical 120 minute long 4K movie, you know, shown theatrically, uncompressed is 5.75 terabytes. So yeah, uh, yeah, a petabyte is a lot more. Moving over to today's presentation, uh, Google obviously made, you know, kind of a big deal about the fact that Gemini 2.5 is now widely available. I'm not gonna go on too long about the LLM side of things, but I, I do have to be honest, I've been using 2.5 quite a bit lately. In fact, it, it pretty much has become, surprisingly, my daily driver LLM. Now on the creative side of things, we got some announcements and some new features for VO2, Imagen 3, uh, Chirp 3, which is sort of a speech synthesis sort of thing, kind of, like think Eleven Labs, uh, and Lyra, which is a new AI music generator. Google did kind of flex here, noting that this makes them the only platform that will natively do video, music, image, and speech, which I mean, I guess is kind of true, because again, it also isn't quite what you're thinking since all of this is built on their Vertex platform. So for now, this isn't actually built into like Google Gemini or AI Studio, which is actually what I was hoping for, but at least it is still available. I do have a little bad news on that front, but I've also got some good news as well. On the Lyra side, the music generation side, I think a lot of people were thinking like shots fired at Udio and Suno. Um, as it turns out, maybe not so much. So Lyra generates 30 second songs. Well, I mean, I don't know if I would even call them songs, kind of more like jingles. They are all instrumental, at least from what I've seen. And I think we can tell via their bullet points of elevate brand experiences and streamline content creation that they're not really looking to drop fire beats here. As a quick listen, they provide an example prompt of a high octane bebop tune, uh, prioritize dizzying saxophone and trumpet solos, uh, a bunch of other, you know, keywords along those lines. And this is the output. Listen, I'm not gonna beat up on it too hard. The audio quality is pretty decent. Uh, you know, in terms of the actual output, well, if you need a theme song to a 1979 talk show, uh, well, uh, you know where to find it now. Imagen 3 also got some updates. They noted that there's even better detail, richer lighting, and fewer distracting artifacts than before. We can also now do image editing within Imagen 3 as well. Uh, this is a comparison with Imagen 2. Uh, doing an, a remove microphone edit and then Imagen 3. Uh, obviously the Imagen 3 output looks, uh, you know, pretty, pretty solid. They also dropped Chirp 3 text-to-speech essentially, uh, but with instant custom voices and uh, the ability to train up your own voice, 
only requiring 10 seconds of audio input. So that's kind of cool. But the news that interested me the most was the new features on VO2. I've pretty much been on record saying that VO2, at least currently, is like the best text to video model. The image to video stuff has gotten a lot better as well, and there are some interesting tricks that you can do with it. So while I'm always hesitant to name any one of them the best video generator, namely, again, because any one of them is one update away from being king of the hill. I do have to say that VO2 is very good. The problem, of course, is the cost. Although we do have a bit of a workaround on that coming up in just a minute. In the meantime, in terms of the new features, for one, we can now do in-painting in VO2. As we can see here, we have some original footage with this guy hanging by a wire uh, via the magic of VO2 in-painting. We now have this guy kind of like just floating through the air. I don't know why they chose this as an example because the harness removed output just looks like, you know, wonky AI video now. We do have a closer look at this coming up in just a minute, but in the meantime, I mean, obviously we can also change aspect ratios going from 16.9 to 9.16. This is something that we have definitely seen in, uh, well, on runway at least. And for the most part, I do have to say it looks pretty good. It does go a bit nuts with the gradient in terms of the sky. If you look at the original source video, I mean, that's, that's a pretty deep blue over there. But the moving ground does look pretty good. And interestingly, actually, uh, considering that the light source is coming in from like this direction, uh, it actually casts his shadow correctly there. So yeah, well done. And we now have camera controls in VO2 as well. Uh, here we have a yeah, camera preset of pan right, and then that turns into a push in. Overall, I mean, it looks pretty good. Um, nothing necessarily to get crazy about, considering that we have seen this in, well, say like Minimax's director mode, for example. And we also now have first and last frame in VO2. And while I know that that isn't necessarily mind blowing, in fact, a lot of these updates are features that we have seen on other platforms. It is nice to see, you know, VO2 updating to get these quality of life features. A few other things that I noticed in the presentation that weren't in the documentation. Uh, for one, uh, there's an extend video now, so we can add another six seconds to this video. Uh, VO2 currently outputs at eight seconds, so that brings our uh, total output up to 14 seconds. So that's that's pretty good. To note, they have also implemented synth ID, uh, something that is you know incorporated into the video output um, that is indetectable to the human eye, but you know obviously indicates that it was AI generated. I, to me, I have no problem with that. And we also got a look at some of the tools available in the video in and out painting suite. Uh, you know, obviously there's a brush highlighted here. We have an eraser, invert, which is interesting, a uh, box, uploading a mask and extracting. And it looks like there's like a little person there. So, you know, kind of an instant green screen kind of thing. So, you know, overall some pretty good updates. Now, the downside is, is that all of this is actually only available on the Google Vertex platform. And while yes, the Vertex platform does look a little bit on the intimidating side, it's really not that bad. It's actually free to sign up for. They give you $300 worth of API credits that you can use, you know, for free. Now, moving back over to the bad news is the fact that uh, VO2's new editing and camera controls, uh, you need to be on the allowed list for that. So uh, basically you hit this and fill out a Google Sheet and you know hope that you're gonna get access to it. The same goes for Lyra as well. Uh, to me, that's not a huge deal. I kind of more or less foresee myself using Udio, Suno, or Refusion continuing on for the time being. Back to the Vertex side of things, uh, all you'll need to do to get started is come down to Media Studio. Uh, that will open this up where we can generate an image audio, music, or video. Uh, once again, for right now at least, you can't generate music until you've been whitelisted. Uh, video seems to be fine. In fact, let's take one of the prompts I was using for my follow-up sequel to The Bridge and run that. Uh, again, VO2, 16.9, uh, we'll do four from sure. Eight seconds a pop and um, yeah, you definitely wanna make sure on safety that you have allow adults only. Um, so you can generate people essentially. Can't generate kids, can generate pe like adults, I guess. Uh, so let's fire this off and see what we get. And after just a few moments, yeah, we end up with four outputs. And yeah, to note, we're, we're in space now. Um, so everyone that was like criticizing and going like, oh, it's just typical fantasy thing. You don't know where this thing's going. 
And again, I do have to say, you know, given this isn't like the hardest prompt in the world, but still, I mean, the quality of VO2 is pretty remarkable. Now, I do want to note that if you go this route, you will definitely want to make sure that you download your outputs. I, I don't believe that they save anywhere here. So uh, just as an FYI, as in precaution, make sure that you save it. Obviously, do keep an eye on your cost breakdown just in case that does end up changing. Um, you know, I don't want to be responsible for you losing a bunch of money as well. And while this version at least might not have access to image to video or, you know, in painting or any of the other things, that's not to say that VO2 isn't a very powerful powerful model. Again, I made an entire short film with like, you know, essentially this version of it, because again, this is the big daddy version of VO2, not the nerfed turbo mode that we saw in YouTube shorts. One interesting thing that you can try out with VO2 utilizing Gemini as well is, uh, so I took this mid-journey generated character and comped her into like this gloomy beach scene background. Um, I mean, and fairly badly as well. I mean, that's, the lighting is all wrong here and everything It's just like character slapped on top of a background. But utilizing Gemini 2.5, I took that image over uh, and just said, hey, can you give me a VO2 prompt for this image? Uh, and I did generate one up, but then running that, we ended up with these outputs, which um, again, you know, it isn't the exact character, but it is remarkable the amount of details that it did pick up from the background and everything. And just overall, from a context standpoint, it definitely got who the character is. And for the most part, it is the same character across all four generations as well. I mean, ultimately the point of Vertex is more about API calls and, you know, essentially building your own platform. That actually is, might be an interesting idea as well. Instead of subscribing to a bunch of services, you know, you can just build your own. Would it be cost effective? I mean, individually, probably not, but if you were say a studio or a small advertising agency, I mean, you might actually shave off a few bucks there, especially because you could customize everything. In the meantime, for those of us kind of more on the home studio side, um, nobody blabbed to daddy Google, but apparently Apparently the cookie jar is open right now. Again, I do not know how long that's going to last for. I mean, Google has their event going on right now. There's a good chance they might just forget about it. But I always work under the assumption that the best four letter F word in AI does not last forever. So obviously there is also a ton of other stuff happening. I'm going to try to get back later this week for another video. There's just, there's, there's a lot going on right now. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.